It's week four, and we're ready to discuss our favorite plays on the main slate on DraftKings as we prepare a full cash and GBP lineup, and it's all coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Big thumbs up to our FFC community for continuing to be active in the comment section with their takes on the main slate on FanDuel. Quick reminder that the most active and accurate commenters who give the best reasons will qualify to compete in a free-to-enter contest with a $200 prize pool, which is scheduled to start in week 12. All the details are included in the description. If you enjoy our show, please remember to always smash the like button, share the video with your friends, and hit that red subscribe button followed by the bell icon. We really appreciate it. All right. Let's start with the cash lineup on FanDuel. Michael, let's start at running back. Who do you like to go with? So after watching this Monday night game the other night, uh, I'm, I'm back in love with Zeke and a little disappointed about his start. Obviously, that was against Tampa Bay. Um, but uh, I think at the pricing that we have here, we, we go with Zeke. He, he hasn't been getting involved in the passing game as much as maybe in years past, and there's a little bit of shared utilization here, but I think that's going to bode well for Zeke to have a, a better longevity this season, uh, and he's getting the key touches down at the goal line, um, and you know I, I know this Carolina team has looked pretty solid, but I think the Cowboys are on the way up, so uh, I think at this price, Zeke is, you know, Zeke's being priced out like he's a, you know, a third or fourth round uh, running back in, in draft leagues. And he's, uh, you know, he's still a number one guy. So I, I think we're going to see his his points continue to go up from week to week. What do you think? Yeah, um, you've made reference to it. Look at this. Watch my acting, Michael. Oh, Carolina, one, one, one. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, give me a break. They two of their three games have been against the Jets in Houston. And when they played Houston, they had a rookie QB that nobody thinks is good. And when they played the Jets, they had a rookie QB that only a couple people like Michael Wiley think is good. So, um, yeah, uh, this, the Carolina defense does not, uh, scare me. I I think, uh, Zeke, uh, at $7,000 is dollars is criminally too low on FanDuel. Let's get them in our lineup. And I just want to say that, um, it was super tempting to get uh, Derrick Henry in the the lineup. It's ten thousand two hundred, so it's a lot of uh, a, a, a big cost. If you can make it work, salute to you because I think uh, he's in for a big game, especially if Tennessee's both of their wide receivers are one of their wide receivers that are out. AJ Brown and Julio Jones are both questionable. That also means I think he'll get more involved in the passing game. Can you believe that Derrick Henry involved in the passing game? So, um, so yeah, so watch the news there. And if you can make Henry work in your lineup, get him in Uh, Michael, instead of Henry, because we're going to save some money, where do you want to go? So I think this is a repeat of what I just said about Zeke and that's Jonathan Taylor from the Colts. Um, You know, well, he's he's uh, he's not getting involved in the passing game. At least not the uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, like he he did early earlier. The, you know the Colts aren't quite the, the the Cowboys in terms of I think their ability to handily win games. But uh, I think it ta- Taylor is a key to their team having success. Um, uh, I, I don't think Brissett you know doing the dumping off as as much um, as their uh, as Wentz was. But uh, to me, Jonathan Taylor is a special talent. He's being treated here again with pricing, like he's a third or fourth round running back when he is, he's a first round guy. And so the pricing is just so tempting. I think he's got a low floor. I think he's going to put up some points this week. Yeah. uh, So uh, whether you go with this and agree with us has a lot to do with how confident you are with the Indianapolis Colts. They're 0 and 3 and they played a lot of games from behind. Um, I'm not a big Miami Dolphin uh, supporter. So if you think that the Colts can get uh, up or at least be close all of this game, then I think uh, I think Jonathan Taylor can provide a nice floor. Now, one thing to watch out for, uh, because he's a major bargain and maybe allow you to take steps to adjust this lineup 
to get a Derrick Henry in there is at $5,800. I briefly want to talk about uh, Sonny Michelle. Now, Sonny Michelle is in a great environment. He's home. They have a ridiculously high 30 implied total. And last week, with Daryl Henderson out, uh, they just used Sonny Michelle 20 carries and three receptions. So 23 touches. You might go, well, only 67 yards. That means he sucks. No, it means he faced the Tampa Bay Bucks. And everybody has difficulty running against the Tampa Bay Bucks. You know what team that you, the teams have not had difficulty running up against? The Arizona Cardinals. So uh, I think that uh, Sonny Michelle is a great pick if Daryl Henderson does not play. So you got to watch out for the news on Daryl Henderson. Otherwise, at best, it's going to be a timeshare, and maybe Michelle will get, will get relegated uh, to second string. It all depends on uh, how healthy um, Henderson is. So if you get the word that Henderson's out, get Sonny Michelle in your lineup. But without that, we got to get Taylor in the lineup at $6,600. Um, so let's move to wide receiver. And Michael, I think at this point in the season, you have to make a determination. Is this guy good or is this guy not good when you have a guy who was really highly regarded at the beginning of the year? who's cut off to a slow start. When you're talking about wide receivers, they're inherently volatile, right? They can have bad weeks and good weeks. And the guy that I am eyeing at only $7,200 is Calvin Ridley. Ridley plays a Washington <laughs> football team that cannot stop anybody this year. It's been absolutely uh, amazing. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that the, the Falcons offense has been disappointing, but uh, they face by far their, the easiest defense this week with Washington that they faced so far. And we like that Ridley has been targeted, but he's clearly the number one wide receiver there. So I'm looking for a big game for Ridley. Yeah, it's kind of similar script to what we were just talking about. The, our first two picks, you know, guy who is clearly the, the number one and a, and a number one guy, um, but he's yet to kind of, you know, return to the fantasy owners uh, what I think they want to see. But Ridley needs to get involved if this Falcons team's going to start winning a, a, a few games. And so I like this matchup against the, uh, excuse me, the Washington football team. All right. We have some big boys coming up in our lineup that are going to provide some real firepower. So to afford these guys, we're going to have to save some money. And uh, the first guy that we're targeting, uh, Michael, I don't understand why this guy is so cheap at $5,400. Let's get Jalen Waddell uh, in the lineup. Let's hope for a little bit of a shootout in that Indianapolis-Miami game. Um, one thing is clear. Jacoby Brissett likes Jalen Waddell. Brissett took over in week two and look at the target that he gets for only $5,400. He's just too cheap, Michael. Yeah, this Indianapolis defense has absolutely been gashed by receivers, and so we'll see that again this week. I think Waddle's, good. Waddle's the guy there in Miami. All right, another guy who is at one time super highly regarded. People forget about him at $6,600. Odell Beckham Jr. Um, folks, He's back. He had his first week last week when uh, Jarvis Landry was out. And even though the game script was terrible, they were way ahead of Chicago all game. Uh, he still had a fine game. Landry is out again. And this time they face a Minnesota team that can put points on the board. So force Cleveland to score, but has a very weak secondary. So, uh, clearly the number one target uh on the browns i like odo beckham jr yeah and, and they're gonna uh, the, the browns need to keep obj happy and the way to do that is to have uh, planned out passing that'll go to him that so you know this isn't just going to be uh baker mayfield uh, dumping off to obj or you know hitting him because that's what he sees these are planned plays that go to obj you got to go with guys that have those those opportunities 
All right. One thing I want you guys to watch out for, keep an eye on what's going on here in Tennessee. If one of these guys are proclaimed healthy and good to go, and you are confident they are truly healthy, and the other guy is out, boy, that makes them attractive. Someone you might want to slide in for Odell Beckham Jr. I alluded to this, Michael, that we save money on Waddle, save money on Beckham, so we can start spending the dough. Why don't you go ahead and spend the dough at tight end? All right. Yeah, so most expensive guy here you know but there's a reason why that Travis Kelsey is the most expensive guy he's by far the best uh, receiving tight end has the most upside you know Pat Mahomes coming off a couple of rough games he's got to get a win and who do you go to when you got to get a win we saw it in the playoffs last, last year it's Travis Kelsey it's time for him to go off uh, and guess what even when he didn't go off the last few weeks he's still hitting close to 100 yards and getting in the end zone I think he's gonna have a big week this week and so I really like this pick yeah, what do you think of that Philadelphia secondary watching them against the, the Cowboys? Yeah, I mean, it, it, Philadelphia just looked atrocious on defense all the way through. Uh, and, you know, Kansas City is a passing team, and so that's what we're going to see here. All right. I told you guys we're going to spend money, and we're going to spend money at quarterback. No fooling around at quarterback this week. Um, the guy with the biggest floor this week is absolutely Josh Allen. Uh he, <laughs> He's a home favorite with an obscene 32 implied total. But, but Michael, with Buffalo, they run that offense through Josh Allen. If Buffalo scores 32 points, it's almost impossible to imagine that Allen doesn't have a big game because he's obviously going to throw the ball and he's going to run the ball. And he does both a lot around the goal line. Um, we knew a big game was coming. It, it, it came last week uh, against a bad Washington defense. I watched that Carolina game on Thursday night. Guy, even with Christian McCaffrey out and they had to throw the ball, guys were just wide open <laughs> in uh, that Houston secondary. <sighs> this game could get ugly. I, I only hope that Houston puts some points on the board to keep uh, Allen in the game. But I think Allen is going to be in the game at least for three uh, quarters, and that'll be enough. Yeah, no, unless we saw what happened against that Miami game, I think Allen's going to have a great game. All right, so um, the last uh, actual player before we get defense is another guy that we think provides a great floor at running back. He's already had several really big games. He, th Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is a home favorite seven points you always love that script for running backs uh and pretty good implied total of 26 this is a guy that aaron Rodgers has a lot of faith in you'll throw to him out of the backfield and he will get the goal line carries he already uh has what is this uh how many touchdowns has he had so far this year? Five in three games? Yeah, no, I mean, I, so, you know, San Francisco and New Orleans are two of the stronger defenses in the league. Um, so, you know, to some extent, you got to take that into account when you're looking at him. Some would say the Steelers are obviously a stronger defensive team, but you know, the Steelers are horrible on offense right now, which bodes well for running backs. Uh, Aaron Jones is, is the number one guy in Green Bay, out of the backfield. Uh, and obviously Aaron Rodgers loves to get him the ball um, in touchdown situations on the passing game as well. All right, our last uh, player. Let's see, Michael, how much do we have? Oh, no, we haven't picked him. Sorry, I got to pick Aaron Jones. Let's see how much money's left. $3,100 for a defense. Oh boy, did we save lots of money for a defense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who are we going to go with? Well, I'm not going with Houston. <laughs> that, that's not happening. So, oh boy, Am, I'm going to have to sit here and try to explain why the Jets have a, a, are a good pick at defense. Okay, let me try. Are you ready? Here we go. Um, they're at home. Okay. All right. They face a Tennessee team that may be without both of their weapons 
in their key wide receivers. Um, here's, here's the honest truth, folks. The Jets' defense is not bad. They've actually been pretty good this year. The fact that they have only given up 26, 25, and 19 points when their offense has repeatedly turned the ball over and put them in terrible situations and a bunch of three and outs is a testament to the defense. So um, am I looking for a big game out of the Jets this week? Absolutely not. Uh, but they're only $3,000, and I am hoping that they can give me something close to what they've done before, right? Just not give us negative points or zero points, but contribute with uh, – three points maybe for us all right let's do it so eric i really like this lineup really high floor um you know with some guys that have a lot of upside uh i think we did a pretty good job putting this together and i think like you said if, if we can get if sunny michelle turns out i mean this lineup could just get that much better all right so let's go to gpp all right everybody let me go quickly through our gpp lineup starting with the stack we're going to attack the highest scoring game, 55 over under, with Jalen Hurts to his biggest target, at least a target that I believe has the highest ceiling, Devontae Smith. And we'll run that back with Tyreek Hill, who quite honestly has been disappointing this year. But trust me, folks, his big game is coming. And uh, I think it very well will happen this week. I guess he's already had a big game in week one, but two very disappointing games in week two and three. I think this um, chief offense will get back on track against the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, man, do I like Jalen Hurts upside, not only passing, but with his legs. All right. The other game that we're going to attack, which is over 52 points over under, is the Seattle and San Francisco game. We got DK Metcalf going one way, and then we'll run that back by George uh, Kittle. Um, so I think Metcalf is a, a true talent folks. Um, I still think he's the number one wide receiver on Seattle. And I think George Kittle is the number one target on San Francisco. He looked really good last week. He played all offensive snaps and he faces a Seahawk defense that, uh, has struggled. Here's the problem. Kittle is questionable now. So you got to check that. If you have any doubt that he's going to be 100%, then you have to take him out of any GPP lineup. Same running backs that we ran with in cash games, we're going to run with in GPP. Um, and we're going to do a stack with Zeke Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? I don't have the sound effect set up. Um, the Cowboys are home, and they're favored by four and a half points over Carolina. And their defense actually looked pretty good last week against Philadelphia. So we're going to go with that and we'll wrap it up with Mike Davis and what we believe will be a high scoring game in the dome against Washington. That's our GBP lineup. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to put up on the screen right now, our week four DraftKings predictions, along with our NFL survivor pool picks. That's a really fun show. Please check it out. And we'll also put out another video in relation to NFL DFS strategy that we think you'll really enjoy. Until next week, take care, everybody, and we'll see you next time.